What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Swig Talk Podcast. I am your host, BTS McNuggets Meal, and we got a very special guest. We got a very close friend, Zenith. How you doing? Hi. Hey, everybody. I'm doing good. I just got off work. I had some uh, some Popeye's chicken. It's a season. It's a she is it? Yes. <laughs> um, yes. I, <laughs> it was very good. Um, I I do like I do somewhat prefer uh, McDonald's chicken sandwich, but Popeye's very good chicken biscuits. I love it. I love it. Um, I did not, however, have someone turn a Coke into moose piss. That that would not be fun. But I do love little Nikki very much, so it's it, I like that. Hell yeah. Uh, and Zenith has been a, a a fellow friend, a fellow content creator. We've been. Really close homies. Uh, I got a personal shout out when uh, we did the Too Many Games uh, convention. That one. Uh, everyone, this is one of my uh, good friends and fans. I thank you so much for everything you've done for my show. Uh, too many games. Got I miss conventions. Does anyone else miss conventions? Because like, I I get to see people that I don't often see, and it's just like I go to Too Many Games, and be like, oh hey, I know you from that thing and the thing, and I'm like, it just it's fun. <laughs> Uh, and even there, I, I still ha I still held on to it. I got the the old Zenith hat, and I even got still even got the autograph <laughs> underneath it right there. We got a Zenith part two, and that's it's an inspiration. One of these days, everyone who comes up to me will be uh, a proud owner of a Zenith hat. I'm giving them all away, but only at conventions. Only. <laughs> uh, all right. So on with the questions. Uh, the first one is: What was in what was the the ultimate thing that inspired you to try and get into content creating um it's it's kind of multiple different things like like many people um i was a fan of a certain website uh that i don't like to name these days but um i grew to love uh link show and i grew to love a bunch of other shows and i'm like you know what i like to talk i like to discuss things i was actually at the time i was creating strategy guides over on game facts and uh, that was like a big thing. Like I just wanted to create something and this was my outlet. It was like, okay, I'm a film major. Maybe I should actually put this equipment to good use and try it out. Um, and I figured I, I, I want to try it. And to this day, I always say I do this because I love it. If I didn't make a profit, I would still do it because people enjoy it. And, and I, I'm doing it for the fans. I'm doing it because it's fun. And, uh, you know, I just love to discuss the media. Um, I mean, it. I do have some really loyal patrons. I thank them to the ends of the earth. But I, I do it because I love it. You should have to, you should do all that kind of, you should make content because you want to make it. It's 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 that kind of thing that's the, the driving force. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what, it's what gets it, you it, from point A to point B. It's a labor of love, and I would not advise anyone to make this as a career move. I have a day job. I, I you know, I, I do stuff during the day. I actually pay editors to make this show work and to make my audio into something usable um, and to turn it. I mean, I edit the Disney debate and the other podcasts, but I pay people to edit my major videos because I don't like to hear the sound of my voice. You know, I just... That, that's somebody else's job. That's Future's End's problem. So, you know, we can we can let somebody else deal with that. But um, in general, I just, I do stuff that I love. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, as for your content, you, you have a variety of different stuff. You do uh, reviews, you do Let's Plays, you do a bunch of different stuff. Uh, as for your movie and gaming review content, uh, how would you describe that? Like, what's the, the driving force that's like, okay, I want to talk about this movie, this game? Like I'm always very scatterbrained when it comes to media, as you probably would guess from the different selections. But I like to create a variety of content. And it's not just, you know, creating shows about different types of genres. I think when you're reviewing video games or reviewing films, everything is somebody's first. But also, I, I try to reach out to a bunch of different people from my experiences. A lot of these videos are based about, this is my experience with this video game. I love this because why? I don't like this because of a period of time. It's, it's a lot of personal experiences rolled into that variety. But I always say, 
while you may not always get the biggest numbers with variety, you will get people who you wouldn't normally to get into your content. It, it takes a little bit longer to get them into your content, but because you're giving them so much to dive into, uh, I've had people be like, oh, hey, well, I didn't know you do that DuckTales thing. Hey, let me check out your Disney thing. You know, let, they, they try and sample and do new things. And it's why I try to be like, hey, let's do a classic anime. Let's do something more recent. Let's do something somebody's heard about and then something obscure. It just gives a little bit more, uh, a breath of fresh air. So I'm not just talking about the same thing over and over. Yeah, and it, I I had the biggest problem with that when I was starting out. Even recently, I, that, that was one of the biggest problems with me is that I never really knew what exactly, what kind of content to hold on to, and oh, do people only watch one thing, or it, do do people even watch this other shit that we put together? And you you were one of the main people that had my back. You were just like, yeah, you know, do what you want to do, and your shit will find an audience eventually. It it takes time, and again. There are people who do it and make it work from the get-go, but that's a rarity. The way I always see it is there are people who hound the algorithm and know every little ins and outs and always use the clickbait titles and thumbnails and just play to the algorithm. I don't do that because I would be exhausted. It's, it's an exhausting process trying to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. Be yourself, make the videos that you want to make, and eventually you will find an audience. And and I always put it, I don't want to put out a bad product. So if I'm doing something, I experiment with it, I try with it. If I like it, I continue. There's been some stuff, such as, you know, Barry from Boston. He's Barry from Boston's never coming back. Oh, God, I remember People that. People loved it. <laughs> People loved it, but uh, it just, it wasn't finding an audience, and I wasn't happy with it. But, you know, the horror guru... And I, I love Josh to pieces. He was always like, we need more Barry. And I'm like, you know what? Barry's in all of our hearts for you. Uh, R.I.P. Barry. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 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 yeah, you, you mentioned you talk about uh, the animus, uh, the classic anime. We got the Seinfeld shirt, represent best anime, <laughs> next to Corey in the house, obviously. <laughs> But um, Corey in the house at at a hundred thousand subs. <laughs> yes, cannot wait. Zen also mentioned uh, uh, the uh, your Disney podcast, which is a Disney debate, and you also talk about uh, uh, Duct Tape, which was a uh, recently <laughs> du Duck Tales. I'm sorry, I fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so yes, when... you see, I have this giant roll of duct tape, and I review <laughs> it. It's like it, Linkara has lamps. <laughs> I review this giant roll of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. Uh, so what inspired those exactly? What inspired uh, DuckTales videos and the Disney Debate podcast? Well, the thing is, the Disney Debate is the first video show that stuck. Because at the time, I was shooting darts at a board. Because in, the, in those early days, and if you're an OG one, if you know those early days, back in the day when I just did anything, I just was like... I don't know, let's try this. Let's interview Harry Potter fans at a convention. Let's let's interview uh, all of this channel of people and reviewers that I like, which is how I met Linkara. Let's, I don't know, Tron Legacy just came out. Let's review it. I just threw darts at a board. And <laughs> I didn't have an idea what I wanted to do, but I think that's good in a sense because I was able to figure out what I enjoyed about the stuff that I liked and what I didn't, and I and I kind of took those lessons to heart. And I feel like that first year, you're never you're gonna gonna figure out what you want until you figure out what you don't want. And so I'm just like, okay, I did all that stuff. Then I sat down, and I had met a lot of people at Magfest that that year that I had interviewed a lot of people, and uh, I met a, a group of friends known as the Crazy Crew with Cat, Doug, Eric, um, all of them just in line at a top the fourth wall uh, panel. And we just met over our love for it. And we had been together for a few years going to conventions. And I said, you know what? I'm still not sure I know what my voice is. But I know I like Disney movies. And Kat, you are like the expert on Disney movies. You know more than I do. So why don't we just do a podcast? And that way we can build our voices from there. And it's like, 
okay, we have something we enjoyed. And yeah, those first few episodes, they're kind of they're kind of crap. Our audio is really bad uh, until I switched to the older mic, not the current one I'm using, but the old old mic. Um, but it was something to test the waters to see. Did we enjoy doing it? Is it fun? Yes. So let's let's keep doing it. Let's improve it. Let's build it. And we're still doing it to this day. It's probably one of the oldest shows that people latched on to. Um, Ned Riley built us a Facebook page within that first year. And, like, we just built that fan base. And they kept asking. And they, they were very patient with all the problems that we had from Blip and all the other sites. But, uh, you know, through the years, that, that podcast has stuck. And I use it as an example as you may not have your voice yet. But... After 85 plus episodes of the Disney debate, you get an idea of what you want to do and, and how you, you, you talk and how, how to make it sound more presentable and how to edit it. And that is helpful for your future videos because audio is the most important thing in anything. People will deal with crappy video, but they won't deal with shitty audio. So <laughs> I, I believe that Starting with a podcast and talking and working it out and figuring out what works and doesn't is a really good thing to do. Even if you don't know what your script is, you will be better at unscripted content after years of doing it. And then you'll be able to ad lib in your scripts and make it sound natural. And that's, that's a skill that I took and I put into something else. Now, diving into DuckTales was something different where... We had been doing the Disney debate for a while, and we, we all got together, and we were, me and Cat and Doug, we would always show each other new anime, because they help on the scripts for Zen Anime for, uh, for a lot of the older content. Um, Philip is the one who helps me with the newer content, the stuff that we're remaking. But they were really instrumental in, like, I would show them an anime, they would show me a cartoon, um, Cat showed me Steven Universe, and uh, then we started watching DuckTales together. And I was just like, this is real good. Is this, is this real good? Can we do, like, a podcast on it? And Kat's like, yeah. So <laughs> it was mostly just us sitting down and getting together and just having fun. And uh, a lot of it was just, you know, we wanted to talk about more things than just Disney. Because after a while, it's like, if you've seen some of these old school Disney properties, a lot of them are very boring. <laughs> and a lot of them are either like bad remakes or like we had some really fun times in the Disney debate, but we wanted something new and fun. Mm -hmm. And the D DuckTales was something to, to test the waters. And with that, they built their own channel because I gave them my old channel, Z Zenith and Crew, and they're doing their own reaction content because now they have the experience for the podcast to just do what they want to do. And mm -hmm. uh, it kind of just spawned from there. Hmm. And so I'm assuming the same kind of process happened with uh, one of your longest running memes of uh, History of One Pants. Well, that actually turned about, that came about because my friend, Steve Farah, has long time been a fan since the blog days, since the, the channel that we do not names blog and we would post together and you know me and and zaria and and uh, and uh cartoon hero and a bunch of people we would work together on the blog so we would post stuff and we would cameo in each other's content well one time like we me and uh c Farah, we uh he would ask for cameos and i would just i'm very good at ad-libbing so i would be like you know uh, i would just do a bunch of different stuff like uh, one of the running gags with him is, uh, I'll slap you with my pimp hand. And that was just an ad lib that I came up with because it was just me supposed to be angry. And I'm just like, it's a pimp hand. So <laughs> I'm a pimp named Slickback. Ah, uh, yes! My name is a pimp named Slickback. And then with One Pants, it was just like, it was supposed to be One Piece, but I ended the line early because I messed it up and it sounded like pants. So now it's history of one pants. I am reviewing all the pants. Just, just this one pants. Um, what, what, that's from, when it, it when is history of one pants. I don't know. What, 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 so that's what happened there. 
<laughs> went from pants to duct tape. You, it's, an, it's an evolution. It really is. It's not actually History of One Piece. It's actually History of One Pants. Okay, get it right. <laughs> oh my god, like, it's, it's all about those pants. So last I really need to do that April Fool's video. We've <laughs> done a bunch of crossover videos and collaborations with people over the years. Who would you say are probably some of your favorites to collaborate with and some of your favorite, like, crossover collab videos? Which are some of your favorite? Well, I haven't actually crossed over with a lot of people. I aim to fix that in the future. There's someone who I am crossing over with. I can't name names yet, but it will be in about a year's time. I can tell you that we're reviewing Son of Batman, and that's all I can say at this time. Um, but we'll, that all, that's, that's just mysterious. Um, but my top two right now, I adore Isle of Rangoon, and I love working with uh, Diamond Hagen because they are not a chore to work with. The, the thing is, I've worked with a lot of people. Some people are very, very strict on set. I know me and Magic Steve, we crack a lot of jokes, but a lot of it was, let's just get this done. And don't get me wrong, Magic Steve was very fun with wor to work with. We had a lot of fun on set. But working together with Isla Rangoon and working with uh, Hagen... One, Hagen will purposefully try to make you corpse. That That is her entire deal. And the entire time, like, I remember there was a bit in the Saw review, because I, I scripted the Saw reviews, and um, she was supposed to, to lean in and tase me. Or was it something else? I don't know. But she would just, she, she had to lean in and whisper something in my ear. And instead of doing it, like, you know, quickly, she was just like, And I, I, I saw her reflection in the mirror, and I, I, I had to close my eyes and pretend that I was wincing because I couldn't stop from laughing. And that's the fun part. Like, yes, there was. A... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to do something that's so sort of threatening. <laughs> I know, and it really is threatening. But I laugh in the face of danger. Ah, <sighs> okay. Yes. Yes, there are some things that they didn't catch. <laughs> Petty is fun to work with on set. Um, love it. And, and like, when you have a group of people, uh, you know, Cat and Doug helped us film, that we just all cracked up and we're having fun on set. And I'm upset that Monster got taken down uh, because that was a really good review. But my plan going forward, because for a while the crossovers weren't really canon um because they didn't make sense in terms of my new show but we're going to remake the crossovers to make them youtube friendly um and uh we're going to re redo everything and and hopefully get everything again but um i do have to give a huge shout out to my friend greg from isla rangoon greg has done so much for my show and i i can't thank them enough they're actually a patron of mine and, um, they, they, you know, whenever I'm just like, hey, can I have Sonny Jim teaching my cat how not to eat Legos? Like, he's just like, okay, let's, let's script it because he's really big into Legos. And so, like, we just got together one night and had a thing. And, um, I'm going to be on Rangoon Rift sometime in the future. Nice. Um, I just, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I've seen a rough script. Uh, so we're that that we're working on that. Uh, the only thing that I miss is we didn't actually get to do the Rangoon bits for um, Meet the Feebles in person. All that stuff they sent in on camera, so I had to pretend to know what they were saying and react to it. But I saw the script beforehand, and they're 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 great people. I love working with Isle Rangoon. Uh, <laughs> And Sonny Jim, stop teaching my cats about the Legos. They'll still eat them. <laughs> Do you think you're up to do a little history of Lego for Zenith's audience? And Zenith's cats? <sighs> Fine. For the cats. Out of all the videos you've done throughout the years, what would you say are some of your absolute favorites and ones that you're like, man, those could have been a lot better? Well... 
I have to give a special shout out to the first video that I was wowed by. And this is one that, you know, my older stuff, I don't hold in higher regard. There's only a few videos that I kept from the old channel that I haven't altered. A lot of the new channel I wanted to change for the transition, but the Final Fantasy 1 retrospective, man, like, I put my heart and soul into that video. And yes, it could have been edited tighter. It, I, I know I could have, like, done certain things without all of this stuff, and it's overblown with cameos, but I still love that video. I think it's one of those, it's a love letter to, to the property. It's, it's a, a bit long, but it's just, I love Final Fantasy, and I really wanted to make that video, and I think that, you know, it really came through in that, and I, I had a lot of fun with that, but in terms of new stuff, my favorites right now are, I think, Blood Blockade Battlefront, because that was a personal one for me. Um, it's talking about depression and the stuff that I go through and, and dealing with uh, what that show means to me, and so that's very special for me. I consider Blood Blockade Battlefront Season 1 an anime that everybody should watch at least once in their lives, and one that deserves a spot in your collection regardless of the score that I'm going to give. I personally give Blood Blockade Battlefront a Kana stamp of approval plus. Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was just... It came together so well. <laughs> Phil is always a delight to work with. She is wonderful. Uh, my fantastic partner. Um, she oversees the editing and she did have the script. But like, just the stuff that she was able to pull up. Because I... Ha I Full fair warning, I've only read volume one of Scott Pilgrim, and I still adore the movie, but, like, he, like, Phil filled in all of it, and, and, you know, I got my thoughts out, they got their thoughts out, and it just, it worked out really wonderfully. Um, Personally, I give Scott Pilgrim vs. the World a Kana and Chiaki super stamp of approval, meaning it survives licensed media limbo with flying colors. This film works on so many different levels, and I cannot recommend it enough. As I said at the start of this review, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is my favorite movie of all time. There are other films that I hold on just as high of a pedestal, such as Spider-Man 2, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Wolf Children, and Lilo and Stitch, but Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is a film that I can watch over and over and over and over and over and over again while never getting bored. I love Zentrek. Zentrek was <laughs> totally fun. Like, getting to utilize Comicron 1 a um, little bit behind the scenes fact here. So that originally wasn't supposed to be part of the episode. Um, me and GSR were talking because Game Show Reviewer uh, does all the effects for Link Car's show. And uh, we do the weekly streams together. And I was just saying, hey, this is what we're doing. And he did a lot of like background stuff for us. But he's just like, hey, Link Kara, you know what would be really awesome? If we put Comicron 1 in that shot. And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. You you can put Comic Con 1 in there. So I just... I'm going to fit it into the storyline later how I managed to get the Comic Con 1. But I had a chance to use it, and I took it. So I, I had so much fun with that. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship's Enterprise. It's five-year mission to boldly review anything that strikes my fancy and give my editor an ulcer as he tries to update the schedule to my wishes. And I really love the Kamen Rider. Kamen Rider was fun. Putt-Putt was... It's hard to pick because Putt-Putt was... Like, the, the humongous games reviews was the most fun I've had writing a script because I wrote the Kana parts first because mm -hmm. I wanted to see her reactions. Mm -hmm. And... Um, those were Casey's exact reactions when she first heard of it, because she's never played Putt-Putt, so I was getting their actual reactions from the cast, uh, <laughs> and so, it, like, a lot of these new stuff have been really, really fun to work on. In terms of, I could have done better, um, I think Cloverfield could have been a bit better. I think it's a good 
review, but I do agree with Phil that there are certain things that I don't understand about the marketing and the stuff behind Cloverfield. And mm-hmm. I do try to get across that I'm not an authority. Like, I'm just... I had to watch this film in a class. And uh. this was me trying to get back at a professor who thought this was high art. <laughs> this fo- this found yeah. footage, mo- footage monster movie is clearly high art. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a class on the disaster movie. And uh. Uh, we watched... Poseidon Adventure <laughs> and then Cloverfield in 2012. It's like, okay, you got Poseidon Adventure. That's good. Uh, you got it. You, what? And I, I, I wanted to make it clear in that review that, you know, J.J. Abrams has done good work, but I don't think he understood Godzilla or Kaiju films because it should be about the monster. Um, but I don't think I got too much knowledge enough about why they marketed the film that way. So that's, I could have done that better. J.J. Abrams, the producer of the film, talked at length about Cloverfield at Comic-Con back in 2007. When asked about the origins of the film, he had this to say. We saw all these Godzilla toys and I thought we need our own American monster and not like King Kong. I love King Kong. King Kong is adorable. And Godzilla is a charming monster too. We love Godzilla. But I wanted something that was just insane and intense. And I think the earliest stuff, like the Gurren Lagann remake, I think is just okay. I think the GTO remake is just okay. It's not bad. None of this is bad. Like the History of One Piece, Alveda stuff, those are really good. But I hadn't found my style or voice for the new channel yet. I hadn't even done the the stamps of approval yet. Like, there was a lot of stuff that I hadn't figured out about the direction that I wanted the Bun Squad to go in. And, um, you know, they always say you look at your older content and be like, I could do this better. I still can watch my older content now, at least from, like, you know, the stuff from the start of the Bun Squad. Because it is stuff that I know is good. I found my voice. I know I'm good at this sort of thing. But I hadn't found the branding or personality. I only thought of the name Bun Squad. And and the idea of like the talking cats and all this other stuff. Like six episodes in. So a lot of the stuff is, you know, I had an idea where I wanted the storyline to go. But at this stage I had no real plan aside from let's do some gags and then now i have this massive thing that i'm doing so it's a lot of it is a work in progress i do think those early stuff could have been better uh, but i think once we started zen who like that's where we really hit our stride so i'm i'm really happy with everything from there mm-hmm. yeah um I, I know that i know how you feel about the whole watching your old content and like i can watch my old mc swigga stuff but like man the audio quality is such shit. It's like what you said about like your old Disney debate videos. Like I, I think the audio quality in like the first year of content for me was just absolute shit. But it's like you said, like I, I can go back and watch it again. It's just like, there's that party that like, watches your old stuff and you're just like, man, this was where it all began. I the, the first episode that I ever produced will never see air ever again because it was not good. Yeah, I, I was trying to be this person that I'm not going to mention because I I was trying to be a big caustic critic and I, I made a lot of points that were stupid and bad. And uh. it's just, it was really, really bad. Um, it takes a while. Yes, kitten, it does. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that in the background. I have three cats and two of them are very loud. Uh. So, uh. Um. What was the subject of that but, review? If, you, if, you, if you're comfortable saying that, what was the subject of that? I reviewed All Dogs Go to Heaven, and oh. I stand by one thing about this. It's not a good movie, but the review was badly done. Uh, uh, and yeah. I think the biggest problem is, yes, it's a kid's movie. It doesn't have to make sense, but I think we shouldn't talk down to kids. And All Dogs Go to Heaven has the worst idea imaginable in saying anybody can go to heaven as long as they're a dog. 
It doesn't matter your good deeds. It doesn't matter if you're a murderous asshole. As we see multiple times, you just go to heaven. And I hate that idea. Because it gives you a pass for being a murderous asshole. You know? Fuck, I, you know what? I, I, I've never seen this movie. You're making me want to see it just to see how fucked up it is. <laughs> the sequel is actually worse, but it's worse <laughs> in the way that you can actually have fun with it. Oh, the okay. first one is just like, it's it's bad. <laughs> uh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, last point is um, what kind of, uh, if you're comfortable saying uh, any future content in the works and also social media shout outs if you want to do that. We're doing a Dong and Rampa marathon. That is one fifth recorded, um, and we, we are page eight out of 44. This is the longest video I've ever done. And now, the original Dog and Romper review is long. I think it's like three hours total. Mm -hmm. We cleaned that up. We cleaned it up. We made better points. We did all this. We took it all out. And I think it's still only like a little bit less long. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like this time, it's better paced and better edited. But I know what I want to do with it, and it's talking about a lot of um, critical talking points. Like, there's there's LGBT issues that we're going to bring up in the, the review and stuff that relate the game to me. And I think that's very personal to discuss. Um, so there's a lot more in the works there. Uh, after that, we're going Zen Who. We have uh, Edge of Destruction that is already fully scripted, ready to go. I just need to record it. Um... We are halfway done scripting the Captain Buggy arc of One Piece, the remake. Um, that is taking longer because I completely overhauled that goddamn script like I did with the previous one. A few things about upcoming projects, but, uh, you know, we have a lot of videos in the works. We have stuff coming up. I may be appearing on uh, a certain someone's show in the future. Um, but, you know, there, there's stuff that I can't confirm yet. I need to talk to some people, uh, in, for a bit longer. But, tune in to, uh, Linkar and my streams over on his channel. Uh, you know, I'm moderator on his, on his streams, and we, we tease future stuff happening. Um, uh, but for right now, uh, now that everyone is, uh, fully, fully shot, you know, got, got, we got our vaccinations... Uh, I can actually start doing stuff with uh, Team Minnesota. So, <laughs> things are in the works. I can't say what or when, but they will happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, you can always check me out at Zenith underscore Bun Squad. I'm over at my channel, Zenith Warrior Princess. Although, at the end of the year, we're changing the title to, to the Bun Squad. It's, it's all going to be the Bun Squad. Um, and, uh, yeah, more content coming soon. We're just... It's taking a while since the uh, computer stuff and just ask Caddy, computer stuff can be a bitch sometimes. So yeah, that's that's where you can find me. I'm hard at work with a lot of stuff. Um, working in the mornings, video at night. <laughs> ah, awesome. Uh, well, and uh, as for me, uh, I got a parody song coming up in the works. Uh, Y'all can look forward to that. Um, of course, next month, you know, new parody song, new swig talk, new skit videos, uh, game review from MC Swigga. So, there are a bunch of different stuff to look forward to, obviously. So, I just want to thank you, Zenith, once again for doing this. This was an absolute pleasure, and it was great to catch up with you, my friend. No problem. It was good uh, hanging out with you, and uh, yeah, just check out new stuff in the future, and uh, yeah, it's uh, hopefully this heat wave ends, and uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, check out my stuff. <laughs> yeah, now, we bid you adieu, and let's go watch anime. Let's go watch anime!